Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I love talking about photography. I love getting other people excited about photography and creating, being an artist. I always say, live your dream. And if you can, make a living with your camera. I talk a lot about that. I just finished up the Urban Landscape Masterclass. Spent seven days in New York City uh, shooting everything from the Grand Central Station to uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. My son, Aaron, who's a filmmaker, filmed me, and so it was an absolute blast. So what is an, an urban landscape? Well, an urban landscape is anything that's got a, a human-made structure within it, and I've been doing that for many years. In fact, so I think my early images in uh, high school, even into college, would be classified as urban landscape. They're everywhere. So I had a lot of fun putting this, uh, lands this master class together, and uh, there's a well, there's a whole bunch of images that I created, probably about 40 final images. I didn't get to retouch all of them in the master class. And so there was one I didn't. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this image for a YouTube episode. And so here's the image. It's right literally a block, not even, well, about a block from the Union or the Grand Central Station. And I did some treatment on it to sort of bring you sort of into the forefront of it. So I thought that's an interesting thing. But let me show you, here are some of the urban landscapes that I pulled off from that, that week of shooting. So here's the Empire State Building. Let's see if we, well, we can't really get it much bigger. Pylons, I hit the pylons about three times. We had rain, fog. Here's Dumbo down in, on the Brooklyn side, there's inside the, the Grand Central Station. Here is the Manhattan Bridge looking across. I love these panels. I just had so much fun doing this. Here's the, what I call the, the beauty light at the very end of the day. That's a stitched image, I think, with a, the pano, uh, really right stuff, pano head. I did a lot of tilt shift lens stuff too. So here's some more buildings uh, with the t a 17 tilt shift. I love shooting kind of abstract urban scenarios. Here's at night. This is literally like at 11 o'clock at night down in uh, Dumbo with the uh, Manhattan, or yeah, Manhattan Bridge in the background. Uh, there's 42nd Street looking down that. Here is in the, uh, I guess it's Central Park down, down in the pavilion. And so th that was full of people. So I go through and I talk a lot about how to get people out. I, I love, I love. Uh, doing that. Here's it's next to the Grand Central Station. It's just the the train depot, I think it is. Here's the the Manhattan Bridge, a little abstract. Anyways, you get my point. I had a lot of uh, really fun scenarios that I did with that. So let's let's talk about this image. All right. If I go over to Bridge, here I have five images that I shot with increments of I think about three quarter stops. Normally I do, or maybe it's a stop. I normally do three images and I take and I do a two stop under a normal two stop over. I had my sequence set up from another shot that was really, really a tough one. And I just had five images. So it's not, I don't normally do five. But anyways, we're going to select all these images. We're going to go and I'm going to work into bridge. The same engine that runs Lightroom is in the Camera Adobe RAW. So going from Bridge, I go into Camera Adobe RAW. It's the same stuff. Lightroom has more options, but it's the same engine. And so we're gonna do that. So Command R takes me straight to my RAW converter, Camera RAW 14.4. Command A selects everything. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hover over one of the images, doesn't matter which one. And there's three little dots. I click on that and I say, we're gonna merge to HDR. Here we have that with aligned images on high. So let's see, there's a couple people walking over here. At any rate, couldn't get everyone out. It's the way life is. We're gonna hit merge. It's gonna go over there and do its thing. We're gonna drop it. We're gonna just call this test for now. Drop it into day seven and it will be a DNG, which is uh, keeps it in the uh, raw format. And that's the beautiful thing about this is that I can do an HDR and still leave it as a raw for later if I want to go do some manipulation. It's processing over here. So you can see this little blue line here. There it goes. It's done. So you don't want to get, you know, if you're trying to do stuff and it says, hey, hold on. That's the reason. 
So let's go over here and we're going to click the black and white. I love black and white. It's just because I've spent a good part of my career shooting black and white. And so I'm always a big fan of black and white. So let's go over here and take a look at my exposure. Let's take our contrast up a little bit. Highlights down just a tad. Shadows up just a little bit. White point. Maybe let's see. I'm going to hold that option down. It's clipping on the right hand side. We're going to get rid of that. My cropping was a little bit off here so let's center our our main our main corner to be pretty close to the to the center here so let's do it right about there all right let's go back to my basic and we're going to look at my black point so hold down the option so i can go right about minus 18 is a good spot add a little texture just a tad of clarity let's see right about there dehaze mm, not too much all right, so let's go down to our black and white mixer. We're going to look and see what the sliders here of all the colors in the, that manipulate the black and white tones, what does it do? Now well, the flag is getting tacked there with some change. Orange, not much. Now the yellow's got a little bit, so let's pull it down just a tad right about there. Greens, ooh, overall green. Hmm, that's interesting. Aqua, not much. Blue, now the flag... That's about it. All right, so that gives us a base there. Let's go over to what I really want to talk about, and that's the masking side of things. So we hit this little icon. It's the fourth one down from the top. We say, okay, go. And I've got a whole bunch of options here. I can't explain everything right now, but obviously select subject has been added. It's a nice feature. Select sky has been added. That's a nice feature. We've seen the, uh, the luminance um, or linear uh, gradient and the radial gradient and the luminance range, color range. Those have been around for a while. Right now, what I want to do is I want to start with the radial gradient. And we're going to go and we're going to, this is the nice thing about this. I can adjust it on the fly here. So I just click first and then kind of spin it around and I can adjust it, the width, the height, I can rotate it. We're going to put it right about there. Now, it's not, I'm not locked into this. So we are going to increase our exposure value just a little bit. Now, we're going to come back and make some adjustments in a minute. Fine tune it. We're going to hit the plus, create another mask, hit the radial gradient, and I'm going to now do a vignette overall. So we're going to darken the corners. And, but now I've got to invert that. And then we pull down my shadow or my background sides. So let's move our contrast to the left a little bit. I think that's good. Now, click on mask. We're going to do the linear gradient from the bottom up. And we're going to take out the dark, the dark in the back, the, the, the foreground just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to overall, let's go back to our original mask here, the first one, and let's take a look at it. We're going to maybe tighten it up a little bit, and we're going to, let me pull the contrast, bring it up a little bit more. Then we're going to go back to basic, and I'm just going to take my exposure down just a little bit. We want drama, but we're building drama here. Now, let's go back to mask. We're going to go to my the vignette number two that I did, and we're going to go to, on that mask, we're going to say subtract and add a, take the, with a brush. Then with that, I can go back in here and just pull back some detail. I think I went too far. Now, I can change my density so I don't do 100%, and we're going to come up along here. We're going to try to match the value on this side over here. So we're going to pull back this just a little bit here, and we're trying to match up the the sides. Okay, so let's go over to create new, hit a brush, let's go back to full, and we're going to paint right along here just a little bit and then darken it so we can just match up to the other side. So if I go too far, I go to subtract, hit a brush, and then I just come back here and feather that in. All right, so again, trying to build drama. Let's go a little smaller. I want to see it a little smaller. 
All right, so the, the, the good news is that I can go indefinitely. Let's go and make another mask. I can say, you know, let's take this, this little facade right here and lighten it up. So we take our brush, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to run it right along in here. So we're going to pop that just a little bit. And if I go too wide, I take my subtract brush and I just clean it up here. All right, so the blue is telling me where the mask is. And you can change that color. And I have auto mask on too, which you know, that keeps it within the lines. But at any rate, let's do this real quick. Let's knock this up, snap it just a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is take my uh, highlights to the right and my contrast. And we're going to go back to this one again. Let's take our highlights to the right here a little bit. And contrast. Drop the shadows a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the image and I'm manipulating it as I go here. Unfortunately, I got two cars there, uh, you know, and I got a lot of security cameras, again, being right next to Grand Central Station. I think I'm pretty close. So I could go back up in here. Let's go back to mask. And we add a new mask. We take a brush. And maybe I go and I build a little contrast in within this part of the building behind here. I'm going to fix that little corner there in a minute. So let's go and build some contrast and a little bit of exposure, not too much. Right about there. I'm liking it. I could go back in here. Let's see, create, create a brush. And maybe I want to pull out a little detail in this. I don't know what that is, if that's a business or something. But just pull a little detail there. I think you get the point. The, this mask uh, feature is so powerful. So now what we're going to do is go back one last time to my basic and we're going to say open. We're going to go over to Photoshop. Take a look at it. We're going to take out a few things. So hit tab. Brings back all my little things here. All right. We don't have any actions going right now. So let's get rid of that. We got it. We're going to go over to the Spot healing brush. Let's take out this security camera right here. Like magic, that's a little corner. We don't like that corner. Here's a security camera. We take that one out. I don't know if I could spend much time on these here. That's a lot to ask for. Here's a line, a power line, so I can click on one end here, hold the shift key down, and click. I think I went. Let's just do it by freehand. But look how magic, it just takes that line right out. All right, I can spend more time. Th there's a there's a pole here, it kind of gets distracts my eye. I think there's a flag on the end of that. That took it out. Go along here. A lot of times what I do is I blow it up and I just look around at things. What, what's distracting my eye? Here's somebody walking. This is somebody walking. Maybe I take them out just, just slightly. Uh, it's not doing the best job, but because it's got to pick up something around it. I do a lot of cleanup. And one of the, the, the things I keep teaching people is that you want your eye to be drawn to something. That's what, that's what um, composition is, right? You're, you're isolating something. I don't like this line along here. So look how easy it is to take this stuff out. I'm going kind of fast here. So that cleaned up that a little bit. Let's go back down. We're not done. Oop, they got one little spot up here. All right, let's go now, and we're going to take this image mode to RGB, because when I convert it to black and white, it's a grayscale. And then we're going to finish this off with filter, Skyloom Luminar, Luminar Neo. Now, you may have another third-party on one or something on third-party uh, plugins. Um, Luminar, I've been using for a number of years. All right, so I'm going to hit E, which gives me my edit tools. We're going to go down to the bottom down here and hit Mystical. We're going to go about 41 and say, well, I'm going to click on that and say OK. And then I'm going to go to Details, and I'm going to give it about a 14 to 16, somewhere around there, a little snap in Details, a little bit of structure. 
and this is all subjective. And then we go to scroll to the top up here and go to develop. We're going to do smart contrast. Makes it snap a little bit. Maybe pull the highlights down just a tad. Bring up the shadows just a tad. Overall, it looks pretty darn good. If you want to go see what you've done, you hit edits. And this is all the uh, adjustments that we just did. We can go back and adjust them as needed. So hit apply. And it's going to come over. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because of the the fact that I can isolate, even as a corner of a building, not, not like a subject, but it's just a corner of the building and my eye goes to the center and it kind of tapers off. And I did that on a lot of the buildings that I had uh, for the Urban Landscape Masterclass. So a little lesson there. Uh, but if you have any interest in the Urban Landscape Masterclass, there's a link below that you can click on and you get this amazing discount. And it's a lot of fun to get this out to you. So it's 10 hours of training, 27 total lessons. With that, I hope you learned something. I don't know what it is about black and white. I love it. And I'll probably go to my grave still uh, having a passion and love for black and white. I love black and white portraits too because it, I think it reveals a little more character. And I think the somehow the black and white does that. So with that, if you happen to enjoy this, hit the uh, or subscribe, hit the little notification bell if you want to get more content. I'm hoping to keep adding uh, new, um, you know, exciting things that you guys can learn. I can pass on to you guys. So, till next time, keep taking pictures and creating, and uh, enjoy the process and pass it on to others as well.